What is up guys, today, like the title says, we're going to be going over landscaping. We're going to be covering all the essential parts of landscaping, so by the end of the video, you will have all the required bits of information to go out and create your very first map. Before we start, if you like this video, it would be really awesome if you could drop a like on the video, drop a sub to my channel, and maybe a comment for the algorithm. It really supports me producing this kind of content, so if you could help me out, that would be really cool. Okay, let's get into this. So today we're going to be analysing a map produced by a good friend of mine who goes by the name of Wolf Digital. My friend Wolf is a professional 3D modeler and asset creator, so if you're looking for some breathtaking assets or maps for your game, I'd highly recommend checking out his stuff on the UE4 marketplace. I'll leave a link in the description for anyone who's interested. So how did Sir Wolf go about producing a map like this? Well, this map consists of three parts. Static meshes, aka 3D models, which are produced in external softwares like Blender or Maya. The landscape, which is the actual ground you see. And foliage, which is basically a huge amount of static meshes we can paint onto our landscape for decoration. So first, let's delete our static meshes and our foliage. And let's talk about the landscape. So this is our landscape. A bit of mesh which we can sculpt and paint on. Now these next few steps will be slightly different depending what version of Unreal you're using. I'm using version 4.25. If you can't see the setting I'm using, just look around the settings until you find it. The location of these settings are fairly similar between Unreal versions. So the first thing we're going to do is go on to landscape mode. At the top, under modes, select landscape mode. Now we can see three tabs. Manage, which allows us to manage our landscapes. Sculpt, which allows us to sculpt our landscapes into a shape and paint, which allows us to paint onto our landscape. So let's hop into manage and let's create a landscape. So click new. Now we can move our landscape, adjust the size, change the number of rows and columns because landscapes work in a grid, and we can even click fill world, which will cover the entire level with our landscape. So when you're happy with it, click create. Now you've created it, you should see your landscape's name appear in the landscape editor. You can only edit the landscape that you've got selected here. So if you've got multiple landscapes, make sure yours is selected. So to put it simply, the manage tab is used to create landscapes and adjust the landscape grid blocks. So if you click on the add tool, then click next to the landscape, we can add new landscape blocks. If you click delete, then click on a block, we can delete that block. So that's the manage tab, adjusting the landscape. Now let's hop into sculpt mode. So in sculpt mode, we have a variety of tools we can use. Today we'll be covering the sculpt, noise, smooth and erosion tool, as these are the primary tools you'll be using. So with any tool, you can left click to use the tool, then you can hold shift and left click again to do the opposite. So the sculpt tool is used to sculpt your landscape into the general shape you're trying to achieve. This tool will always be used when creating your landscape. The noise tool you can think of as a way of creating variations in your shapes, so they look more natural and less man-made. This tool can be used when you want to add detail or ruggedness to your shapes. The smooth tool, like it says in the name, will smooth out your shapes. The erosion tool can be used to create craters in your level. This tool can also be used to create things like rivers and sand dunes. So for the workflow, start with your sculpt tool, then use the other three to add details to the sculpt. So the way each tool works is by doing calculations based upon your current landscape. This means you'll get different results depending what you've already done to your landscape. And it also means that some tools will require some mouse movement to activate. So if your tool isn't working, try moving your mouse. For each brush, in the detail section, we can now change certain settings. We can change our brush strength, its shape, its size, and how much the brush falls off, which changes how smooth your edges are. Now we can also change our brush shape via texture. This setting will be in a slightly different location based on your UE4 version, but for people using 4.25 onwards, click the circle brush and select pattern. Now we can drop a texture onto our texture setting, and we can sculpt our map using this new texture brush. Okay, that is sculpting. It's a skill which is easy to learn, but hard to master. 
so don't beat yourself up if you can't get things looking good first try. Okay, for painting, we first need to create a landscape material. So hop into your content browser, right click, new material. Call this landscape material and double click to open it up. Let's right click and bring in a landscape layer blend node and plug this into the base color. Now what we want to do is add different colors or textures onto our landscape. So click on the node and add as many array elements as you want colors or textures. I'm going to be adding two and I'm going to call the first one green and I'm going to call the second one blue. Now what we can do is either hold T plus click to bring in a texture node or hold three and click to bring in a constant vector color node. I'm going to hold three and click twice to bring in two constants. And for the first, I'm going to make the color green. And for the second, I'm going to make the color blue. Plug these constants into the corresponding layered blend input and then save your material. Now, hopping back into the viewport, we can either go onto select mode and drag and drop our material onto our landscape material in the details, or we can hop into manage mode, select our landscape, and do the same thing. So when you've applied your material to your landscape, we can hop into our paint tab and you'll now see each paint you made in your material. Before we can start painting, we need to do one more thing, and that is to create a layer using each material. So click the plus sign and then select weight blended layer and save your layer. Then do the same for your other materials. Now we can start painting our landscapes the same way we sculpted it. By selecting our paint and then left clicking to paint and shift left clicking to erase. And that is how we can paint our landscape. Pretty simple. And finally, let's add some foliage. So like I said earlier, foliage is basically painting on 3D static meshes for decoration. We use this to speed up our level creation as we don't need to manually drag and drop each mesh onto our landscape. So on mode, select foliage. Then find a mesh you'd like to use and drag and drop it onto your foliage. I'm just gonna throw on something random. And now the same way we sculpted and painted our landscape, making sure our mesh is ticked, we can now left click to paint on our meshes and shift left click to delete them. You'll see a number next to each mesh with the number of meshes you've painted on your landscape. Remember, the more meshes you paint on, the more work you'll put on your CPU. So take this into consideration when designing your game. The only difference with foliage is that we have a density setting. This allows us to change how many meshes are painted on our landscape when we click. So a high density will paint on lots and a low density will paint on a few. And that, my friends, is everything you need to know about landscaping to produce your very first map. I hope you enjoyed this video and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. Stay awesome and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Don't let you